Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melder Production, and today I want to talk about a new instrument that's been released for M Sound Factory. I believe this is actually free, at least for the full owners of M Sound Factory, and this is Power Brass. So a few months ago, I went over the power strings. Now we have Power Brass. So this one is your horn section, basically, and it's all sampled. So, uh, you know, it's not like a, you know, synth horns or something. These are actual sampled horns. And it sounds like this. Like that. So we have a full section here. I have it on all brass, but of course you have individuals like tubas, French horns, trombones, trumpets, and a mixed section, which you can kind of make what you want out of that. So here we have stage spread. Not exactly the same as panning, but it's somewhat similar. This piano and forte, this controls uh, the volume and I guess the timbre also. And it's controlled by the mod wheel like this. So I'm using my mod wheel here, but even if I have it in the middle, if I press the velocity lightly, it is velocity sensitive and I can kind of adjust that as well. Uh, here you can control how much the mod wheel controls it here. So if I have it here, you see it's only doing a little bit before I have it all the way up. You see it's doing a lot, so you can control it there. In a second I'll show you how to change this so you're not using the velocity to control it. For me, like I don't like my velocity controlling it, so I'll show you how to get rid of that. Uh, but for now, let's go here. The bright and dark, self-explanatory. Uh, human eyes, this would just give a little bit of like detune effect. Let me see if I can make it so you can hear it. So it just brings in those little pitch imperfections. And it's not just, you know, let's say one pitch, it kind of varies over time. So it's a little bit more natural. And finally, we have the different articulations like sustain, legato. Let's see if I can do this with the velocity on. Okay, so you see it's legato. This is all monotone. And then finally, we have with staccato. So even if I'm holding it down, it plays staccato like that. I'll put it back to sustain here. And finally we have harmony here. And this will just add you know, different harmonies to it. So if I turn this on. I'll do a different one here. So the left here is going to be your interval. So in this case, uh, seven semitones up, which I believe is a perfect fifth. And this is your volume. So if I bring it down, up, so you can kind of adjust it. It has three here, but you kind of get the idea. You can use three if you want, you can use one if you want, whatever you want. Uh, so that gives you an idea how that works. Um, show you the articulations here. This gives you a little bit more in-depth way to control this. So I'll show you this on an individual instrument with all of these, it's a little bit hard, but you see it has all these different categories here for the volume, volume of the tuba sustains, horn sustains, trombone sustains, etc. And you can mix those, you know, the way you want them. So you think like, ah, oh, you know what? The horns are a little bit too loud. I kind of want to just turn the volume down on that. It's easy to do here. Also the attack, you can move the attack curve, the amount you're holding it, decay, etc. You can adjust these for each individual section, tubas, horns, etc. here. So that's what this is here. In the creative uh, section here, they have some interesting things here, like some things I wouldn't expect, like synth brass. If I turn this on. So I have synth brass. 
normal brass. And I can mix them together. I can even, you know, like, do the octaves here. Or here. That sounds kind of crazy. Uh, also, you have different types here. Hall brass, trumpet, French horn, etc. You can kind of choose. And they do actually sound different. Let me see if I can demonstrate it here. There you go. So that's how that works. The convolution, you might think this is, oh, it's like a reverb, but it's not a reverb. What is, this is doing is uh, convolving. Is that convolving, convoluting? I don't know. Uh, the signal using a uh, synth oscillator here. So here it is normally. So this is kind of an experimental and like creative thing. And of course I have it at hundred, but you can move it down too. Whatever sounds good to you, or it doesn't sound good, if you don't like it, just turn it off. Uh, we have FM here, so I believe this uh, frequency modulating this by its own signal. Turn this all the way up. So the really interesting sounds. So. For natural, uh, you know, horn sound, it may not may not be that good. But something like this for like a movie soundtrack or something, well, not bad. Might be fun. So there you go. You have that in there, and finally the diffusion. See here that kind of like a diffusion filter in there creates an interesting effect. So there you go. And you can control the tone and everything there too. These are kind of the creative effects. Maybe you want these, maybe you don't, but they're there. Here you have more of the normal effects. Uh, you have some like distortion, uh, motion. This is kind of like a pitch shift here. Or not pitch shift, a pitch drift I should say. And you can control the width here. And you can control the speed. That sounds crazy. You may not want to do that. Uh, so you have this like different ways to do that. Uh, I don't want to get into that too much. Probably not everybody's using that, but it's there if you want it. Uh, you have chorus. So it's kind of interesting. Different modulation effects here, like flanger. Phaser. I might want to turn the feedback up if you want to hear that. So you have that. I probably would want to use a phaser on horns, but it's there if you want it. And we have a lo fi effect too. So you have that in there too. Reverb, which I've been using the whole time. Sounds pretty good to me. And of course you have delay. EQ, there. these are kind of like self-explanatory. I'll turn this back on, I'll just use the theater like we we're doing. And of course we have globals. As I said before, you might be thinking like, how do I turn off the velocity? I want to, you know, when I hit it 
softly, it's too soft. Exactly, you don't want that. So all we do is just take the velocity range, move it to zero. So no matter how hard or soft we hit the keys, it's going to be the same volume. It's all gonna be controlled now by the mod wheel. So that's the way I like to set it. You may not want to, and you can of course control this. So it's like, oh, a little, if I set it, you know, at negative six, velocity will affect it a little bit, but not too much. If I set it all the way here, maybe at negative 40, it's gonna affect it a lot. So I'm gonna set it here, I'm gonna hit the lock because we're gonna go through some presets now. And I'll show you what they sound like. So that was the first one. Here's all brass accented. Cool staccato. Cool. And these are just the different sections. There's kind of no point in going through each one of them. I'll just do a few of them. I don't know why I'm playing legato with this sustain patch, but I was. Uh, so let's get into some of the more interesting ones. Sforzando. Sforzando crescendo. Sorry, getting a little bit loud there. I apologize for that. Uh, also, no, I'm not using the mod wheel to do that. That's doing that automatically, which I imagine here is in this section where it's using the staccato along with the sustain and uh, using some of the little tricks there to make that happen. Uh, I don't want to go through too many of these, but let's try these like power bass brass. Let's try soft pad. It gets loud fast. Muted trumpets. Uh, octave brass. Right, that's cool. I like that. It's octaves and I don't have to play it myself. Uh, let's see. Growling tubas. King horns. Regal fanfare. Uh, let's just do one more. Modern stab. That's cool, it almost sounds like EDM. And of course you have some creative stuff in here. That's interesting. And it does sound like a synth pad, organ brass pad. Kind of interesting how they, how they do that. Uh, FM brass. Last one, let's do deep grow. So that's some interesting sound design stuff. I'll probably have to look in there later to see exactly what they're doing, but it's certainly fun. So as you can hear, there's a lots of different sounds in here. Of course, there's like really natural sounds you can use, but also there's some kind of interesting sound design stuff you can use as well. And luckily this has a fairly low, uh, I believe RAM footprint, so it's not so big to load. It doesn't take a long time and hopefully won't gobble up all the RAM you need for your project. So it's kind of nice, lightweight, nice sounding instrument that you can use on lots of different tracks. So hopefully I explained this well and kind of showed you what this can do. If I did, give me a thumbs up. If you have any more questions, leave those down below, but please make sure to check out all the other plugins at MullerProduction.com. And until next time, see you.